so Xiaomi's Hyper OS is about to be released soon officially for the older devices. Currently it is in beta stage but also comes pre-installed in Xiaomi 14 series. Meanwhile me using Hyper OS on my Redmi Note 7 also known as Lavender and it is not supported officially. So if you want to know how I got this HyperOS beta, then the answer is pretty simple. It's a ported ROM which is kinda like custom ROM but it's not. So now let's have a look at what they got for us. Since MIUI 12, it's obviously clear that the Xiaomi wants to copy every iPhone features as they can. And with HyperOS, they got all new lock screen customization and widgets. Widgets are the most impressive one in my opinion, why you might ask. So first of all, there is no end to widgets page like I can literally scroll to infinity and it won't stop showing me widgets. And then there is these live widgets which is very impressive and these live widgets are not just static all the time. These widgets can have a background like a live wallpaper or the whole widget can be a game which is a game changer. Then for lock screen customization, there is new lock screen styles which is like iOS but with more clock styles which can be customized and once you set the preferred lock screen style, then the same clock will appear on always on display which makes it appear like this. You will also get lock screen effects like depth wallpaper, glass effect like nothing OS or matte effect which can blur the background. So all of these including themes, HyperOS is great in terms of customization. Another thing that the Xiaomi did is brought interconnectivity which is much like Apple ecosystem or the Harbin OS. With this, you can basically connect your other Xiaomi devices and then you can control it or switch between them instantly or you can transfer files as well. Control center have some changes too and its layout is more like iOS now. Other than these, most of the settings are similar to MIUI. Now there is dynamic island kind of thing too for notification. So you can see important notification will appear like this. I think currently this is only for battery related notification cause I saw this only when charging and while switching battery modes. Safety net and wideband can be a concern for users those who use banking and streaming apps without root as both of them is broken from that I meant safety net fails and wideband is L3. Geekbench score is average that you can get from Snapdragon 660 device with a custom ROM or port ROM and it uses Predator Storm Breaker 10.0 which is based on 4.4 kernel. CPU throttling results looks pretty impressive for 5 minute test with 100 threads but can it perform well in games too? Let's find it out. So as you can see I tried to play Call of Duty with default graphics settings which is low graphics and medium FPS and the game at first is very laggy as you can see and it was because screen recording was on and after some time the screen recorder just dies and stops working which leads to smoother gameplay. I didn't even notice the screen recorder disappeared until I finished the match. So while playing games, I faced a very annoying bug where the Google Play games keeps asking me to sign in even after doing so. Maybe it was crashing in background and asking for it again and again. Camera also have some issue for the first time I was not able to use the camera even after accepting the terms and then with some black magic I was able to use it but then it was not able to record video. When I switched to video the app freezed and crashed as you can see. One more thing is that sometimes the device will just charge when you connect it to PC and lock screen customization was also crashing at first after doing some tinkering. But then a miracle happened and it works again. So in the end HyperOS does provide iOS like experience with all of these new customization features like depth wallpaper, lock screen customization, widgets and the interconnectivity. These features seems to be pretty convincing to buy a new Xiaomi device and maybe some iPhone users might shift on it too, well who knows. But for 3GB RAM users it can be pretty painful to use as a daily driver as my device was not able to handle it and was crashing most of the time. So how I got this? Obviously with some black magic behind the scenes. 
So if you want to get it on your device, then you must have a unlocked bootloader and support for custom ROM or port ROM. Then just join the Telegram group of your device and it should be available there. Then just simply flash it via custom recovery. Searching on XDA might work too, but Telegram is better as most of them are released on Telegram instead of XDA. If you can't find any, then join my Telegram group. I'll send you the link to your device group. So that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Also leave a comment and like on this video.